Ski resorts can be super fun, right? A snow-filled wonderland you visit once a year to just relax and have fun? Sounds great. But the question is, what do these ski resorts do when the snow season's over? Do they just close down, or do they become horror houses like in The Shining? Neither. What happens is, wait, we can't tell you everything all at once, so stay tuned to the video to find out. First, let's talk about off-season gaps. April onwards, most ski resorts close up shop to the general public, but if you think their employees take a six-month-long vacation after that, you're wrong. Instead, most ski resorts bring out their to-do list to keep their facilities updated. This includes cleaning, inspection, quality assurance, and repair. Because ski resorts aren't just glorified snow hotels, they have a lot of electrical, safety, and environmental systems in place which need regular upkeep and summers are a great time to do that. A lot of resorts even make mountain erosion a part of their maintenance process to ensure visitor safety during on seasons. But where some resorts take this time to maintain themselves, others stay open all year round. Now you'll probably ask, how can a ski resort operate without snow? The answer, artificial snow. In fact, a lot of ski resorts have become year-round destinations thanks to the marvels of this invention. Adding to that, artificial snow's actually good for people, resorts, and the environment. Well, to an extent. But they do work because before the advent of such snow, resorts would wait for weather forecasts to open up and close shop. As you can imagine, this was super inconvenient because even if the weather forecast does predict snow, it doesn't always happen. Mother Nature has her ways, after all. So, to avoid going out of business just because it didn't snow that day, resorts have started creating their own forms of snow. This works as an insurance policy for resorts because then, they don't have to wait for a seasonal shift to open up. Instead, they can just stay open the whole year round. The resort wins, the people get their snowy fun, and all in all, it's a win-win situation. Now let's learn about how this snow is made. Considering how almost 90% of resorts have snow making available on their premises, the question arises, how exactly is the snow made and spread? Of course, with natural snow, you don't have to worry about it not spreading across the area. In fact, you have to worry about the opposite. But with artificial snow, creating and then spreading it out seems like a chore, no? Not entirely. You'll be surprised to know that artificial snow making is actually a lot similar to natural, only it needs some human involvement. Just not like the way Elsa does it. So what happens is the resort uses equipment called snow guns, snow cannons, or snow makers to blast droplets of water in cold air which freeze on contact. The results? Snow. This falls on the grounds and trails coating slopes as they go and sometimes they look so natural that skiers may not even recognize it's fake. A lot of resorts such as machines positioned on different areas of their trails to make sure water's blasting high in the area so that the snow is constantly falling when nature doesn't want to cooperate, the way the resorts can ensure full coverage without compromising its promise to provide skiers with icy snow fill fun. Let's not forget about snow cats. We know you must be imagining all kinds of hairy beasts covered with snow when we say snow cats, but that's not what they are. Where snow guns are machines that help blast water in the air to turn into snow, snow cats are machines or vehicles, actually, that help move and smooth out the snow or mountains. The use of these mechanical marvels ensures that all the snow is evenly distributed on the skiing trail. That obviously takes a lot of skilled human resources to achieve, so the next time you visit a resort and find evenly dusted snow in the area where snow wasn't supposed to fall, don't forget to leave a thank you note to your hotel room for those people to find out. The question is though, is such snow safe? Especially for the natural habitat resorts have around their premises. Also, does artificial snow always work? Well, there's a lot to unpack here, so we'll go one by one. First, let's talk about whether the snow's safe or not. Some argue it isn't, and they aren't exactly wrong depending on the type of snow being used. Now, we told you about water blasting to create snow, right? But another form of fake snow is the one made of polyacrylate polymer, like sodium polycrylate. This material is shredded to produce snowflakes of similar size and color to do the real thing. Because sodium polycrate, or hydrogel, is a super absorbent polymer, it can absorb about 800 times its weight in water. This helps create an effective cool. Wet snow and materials can even be cooled down to make it seem more realistic. But there's a catch. While sodium polycrate isn't exactly harmful or toxic in general, it does cause drains and pipes to clog, and even respiratory issues in people if inhaled from close proximity. It's also not the best thing to ingest, especially for pets, so you might want to keep your cats away from anything covered with the stuff. And even in plants, it could create a layer of fake snow on leaves that could basically mess up their natural systems, but if you're willing to look 
past all these issues, fake snow is biodegradable, with some terms and conditions on the side, of course. What's more is the water usage fake snow takes up. Because icing up a whole resort definitely isn't a joke, keeping that in mind to give you an idea, to create fake snow up to 20,000 cubic meters of water can be used to whitewash a 1,600 meter ski slope. That's a medium sized slope for you. Add electricity usage and noise pollution to the mix, and you have a system that could severely harm the flora and fauna surrounding the resort. And this brings us to the second question we asked earlier, does such a system always work? Yes and no. So basically creating fake snow isn't that difficult if you have a system in place, but that whole system can be derailed if mother nature, yes, she's back, doesn't cooperate. Because to create water-based artificial snow, you need an ideal temperature of 28 degrees Fahrenheit or negative two Celsius or lower, any higher than this, and you can risk melting the precious snow you've created. Also, the usage of water is a huge issue in itself. Let's say if an area is going through a drought, this whole practice wouldn't stand a chance. And you probably guessed how expensive snowmaking can be, right? So for smaller, family-run, or medium-sized resorts, even the cost can be a hindrance in letting them run their business throughout the year. Global climate change doesn't help either, because as temperatures across the world rise, this practice keeps becoming harder to sustain. Then, what is the solution? Not overusing one's natural resources is one. If you are a resort owner, you've got to take a look for your carbon footprint to make sure you're not harming the environment in order to keep your business running. And if you're a skier or visitor, you have to make sure you're aware of the fake snow practices resorts are taking up to survive. Because, well, yes, it is important to keep your business running, adding more fuel to the fire that's global warming isn't really going to help anyone in the long run. So what can you do to make sure you're not supporting the snowmaking industry? and damaging our environment? Make off-season ski resort visits a norm, that's how. Let's look at some ways off-season visiting is better. Boating under the cloudless sky, staying at a practically empty resort, and hiking on a trail across from a summery landscape are just a few reasons why off-season holidays are better. In fact, in order to attract a crowd even without snow, resorts are starting offering different sports activities to people. This includes mountain biking, horseback riding, swimming, climbing, paragliding, canyoning, and a lot lot more. Basically, it's like a summer vacation of the Catskills. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel fans would know what we mean. Also, visiting a ski resort in the off-season can give you a break from your routine. We love snow, but to be honest, will you be able to get such an idyllic view of nature in a snowy season? Nah, those days are all about the whitewashed hills and mountains. The real nature is visible in the summer instead. In fact, we think this view is so pretty that we could let go of winter skiing altogether. Plus, there's the added benefit of having different tourist experiences during warmer temperatures. You could explore the area's beaches, visit the local bars, have a rooftop dining experience, and practically everything that you're missing out on during the winter is available. So why wouldn't you make off-season holidaying a norm? And remember, you're supporting the climate all while you do it, so a total win-win for us, right? Not that you should let go of winter skiing, but hey, if snowmaking's a pain, at least we know that alternates that these resorts can, uh, resort to, right? And that's a wrap for this video. What are your opinions about snowmaking practices taken up by resorts? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.